My name is uh, Nilo Bjargaard. I'm the, the light designer and set designer for Volbeat. Also show designing with uh, Guy Sykes. Yeah, I've been with the band for 14 years. Uh, it's been quite the ride from uh, small clubs in uh, Germany in the beginning and uh, now to uh, big arenas. Um, this is our third tour this year. We uh, started in America where we co-headlined with Ghost. And then we did a full summer uh, where we headlined Rock'em Ring, Rock'em Park, uh, did all those big shows. And uh, now we're here on our last uh, tour of the year. Servant on the Road, it's called. So, of course, uh, a lot of the set changes we've done over the years is also um, due to budget. And that's actually the biggest challenge as a light designer is that you kind of got to match the budgets with your tour and also the places that you play. So you, that's the first thing you look at is basically what are the venues you're playing and where you're going and uh, how much gear can you then fit in and are there money for that? The ticket sales are good and management are ready to spend the money. Uh, but for us, it's uh, in the beginning, we were just using backdrops uh, for the first tours. We had different backdrops. Uh, with Velcro, we tore them down, and so we had two or three backdrops. And then it evolved into uh, a floor package of lights. Um, of course, a, a small desk. It's been a big challenge to follow the band as uh, their success have been growing and growing, and also some big jumps from where we did uh, bigger clubs to actually going into smaller arenas and stuff like that. So it's been a very, very interesting and fun ride. And uh, it's been really, really, I learned so much uh, over these years. It's been really cool. For this tour, I did five or six different designs and some of them I found more interesting than this. And uh, so I was pitching all these designs to, of course, management and uh, also with Guy, who's uh, my co-designer. Uh, who looked into the budgets and also you have the vendors, where can we go for a vendor, which vendors are available, what gear do they have and all that. Um, and this is where we landed and I agree it's not a small rig, it's a nice big looking rig. Um, but like I said it, it, it evolved from, from uh, the first design to now the, the sixth design, so th this is where we are now. But I'm, I'm not disappointed in at, at all, I'm very very happy and I think once uh, we saw it up and running and we had the time, this time we had uh, 10 days to program. Uh, so that's very, very fortunate and we got the most out of it, I think. Um, so I'm very, very uh, happy about it. I am. So we, uh, we're currently touring with Christy Lights in, uh, in Europe. They come out of the UK uh, and they opened up in Berlin. So it's kind of that chapter that are helping us out. Uh, we got an English crew with us. Um, doing a fantastic job, I'm very, very fortunate. We got the latest product for Martin. Uh, we got the Mac Ultra series, which is a LED-based uh, moving light as our workhorses. And I chose to go with their wash, uh, their normal wash, like which is basically a little bit going old school again, the old time washes, of course, in an LED version. Uh, and because I kind of got, um, because I've used the flatheads LEDs now for so long as wash fixtures, and I kind of got, oh, you know, I need to see something else. And I'm really enjoying looking at the wash lights now uh, with the new Mac Ultra Wash. It looks fantastic. And I think it's kind of that old school look that we need for our rig. Uh, and also it suits the band so well, uh, you know, with the zoom and in, you can, you know, you can have the beams, but you can also have like a white zoom. So you can use them b both as I do coloring the, the various objects on stage the guys, or I can use them as crowd lights. Uh, I can use them as beams on stage as well to kind of get their fingers and, and you know, a lot of effects fly out in the room, hitting the audience and stuff like that. So, super cool. You know, I'm self-taught. I've been in the business uh, 34 years now, uh, and I started at small clubs and it was, you know, you, you only had so much lights. It was about, you know, punting and it was about, uh, counting one, two, three, four, you know, getting the most out of the, the rig uh, with the looks. And that kind of followed me and also with these guys as uh, a lot of the songs are very in your face all the time. There's not many ballads and stuff, so you don't really get those big ballad looks. In some songs you do, but most of it is very power, uh, power-based music. And, uh, you know, so the lights can be very busy, but I try to kind of make it match, of course, that's the whole idea, match the, 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 the songs. And also, of course, I try to li listen to the songs and say, okay, so what kind of color feeling do I get for this? And 
I'm, yeah, I'm probably nine out of ten using colors that people have seen before, red, blues, yellows, orange and stuff like that. And these are the, my go-to colors. And then sometimes I try to mix it up with some CTO, CTBs and stuff like that to, to take it off. But um, I can definitely see some of my shows from the beginning to now that it's evolved also in colors, but also uh, I'm more now into focusing than I have before. You know, you get a lot out of rig if you can find good ways to focus it because you can get some big, big looks. Uh, so I can definitely recommend that. Exploring the, you know, uh, if you have time, you know, try to different uh, focuses to make your rig look bigger. Even though uh, I only have three sticks up there. Um, so it, it, that's definitely the way to go. So yeah, if we move towards the stage, you'll see the uh, Parasite Pit which is uh, part of the runway that the band walks on. They really want to be close to the audience, so this is their way to kind of come down to the audience and uh, be a part of what's going on down here. And uh, in the center, we have a selected group that can uh, come in there and stand, uh, be very close to the band, of course, and then you have the other tickets out here, the other audience. So you'll have audience on both sides of the runway which uh, they're very happy about. They, uh, they're they out here all the time. Yeah, some of the older designs that Nillard and I did or that Nillard did before I joined uh, Volbeat were more theatrical and more risers and things back on the stage, back in the back, more on the upstage side of the uh, of the stage. And uh, in the last probably three or four tours that we've done, we've decided Michael, uh, the singer, wanted to be closer to the band, so or closer to the fans. So we've incorporated some sort of thrust, whether it was the thrust that we used in 2019, uh, other thrust that we've used, and this time we decided to uh, kind of uh, expand it even further uh, to get closer, just because he doesn't, you know, he wants the band to be closer to the fans at all times. So this is the ideal way to do it. And then also in the barricades, we have some. Uh Pyrotechnical going. We don't have uh, any flames on this tour, but we have uh, confetti, we have streamers, uh, we have some jets, um, which you shoot from here. And of course, you're wondering why is there so much big distance from the stage out here? It's because there's a safety distance, of course, uh, between the jets and the audience. So safety, of course, is very much on our minds with everything we do. Um, yeah, that has to be uh, in place so nobody gets hurt. So we can, uh, I'll take you to the Parasite Pit. We have to go this way here. So this is uh, the experience that people get. They'll come here, they have a special wristband. They'll go this way in here. And uh, then they can go inside the Parasite Pit, which is a small area in front of the stage uh, where uh, we'll have some audience. I think we can have 120 people in here. Um, and then they have a very, very unique experience. So you can see the band will walk here. They'll be on stage. So they're basically all around them and you really feel close to the band uh, when you're in here. It's a big experience. Yeah, the Parasite Pit was kind of a, a design that we had to get uh, some of our fan club people in here, people that, uh, uh, VIPs and, and some of the band guests in there to get really up close and personal uh, with, the, uh, with the band as they're performing. And our partners in Tate, um, you know, this is not the original design, but uh, we've gone through a couple of design revisions. And our partners at Tate really, uh, really did a great job in, in getting a design that, A, was built out of stock material, so we didn't have to custom fabricate a whole lot of things, so reducing the expense there. Uh, but adding some custom elements like the LEDs, uh, that's, a, that's something new from Tate uh, with the, our RGB and, uh, and the change. Uh, change colors, it just added a little oomph to the, uh, to the standard catwalk that people have seen before. So as I mentioned before, we have uh, the Mac Ultra series with us, um, and um, it's the wash and performance we have up there, and they're located in the three sticks and the side trusses we have. And on the side hangs, you see the ladders. We have uh, also the performance, uh, Mac Ultra performance, and also we carry uh, a lot of JDCs from uh, DLP. Uh, we have some Auras, and then of course we have some uh, Roby Mega Pointies, which are in the pods we have up there. They're not on at this point, but uh, there's five pods up there, and they're in a in a segment of nine. So they're like 
nine uh, group of nines in the pods together with the auras um, which kind of gives uh, an extra effect they're like more effect light where the others are workhorses and kind of carry the show um, then a lot of the stuff we're doing here is video based so it's all about uh, connecting video and lights to each other and get the most out of it so yeah just following basically the moods of the songs uh, together with the lights and the video to make that kind of go together to make the perfect look so uh, let me take you on stage guys then I can show you the runway and the stage itself so this is uh, the look from stage the band, of course, have this whole area to be on in front of the drum riser. Um, we have a big video V here in front of the drums to um, we have uh, running content on. And then uh, they, of course, use the whole stage deck here as their playground. All monitors and all floor lights are downstage here uh, underneath the grill. Um, so we have a totally empty stage and uh, that was kind of the one of the looks that we wanted to do, like a very clean and nice stage look, uh, without too much cluttering and stuff. And then we can take a we can take a walk on the uh, the parasite pit runway here. And also the, here we have a, another grill with some lights downstage. The runway here comes down, and then you the thing is that we wanted to make it slanted, so you actually move towards the audience down you kind of go down slant to the audience and you feel like you're moving into the crowd which the guys really like so yeah so you kind of feel very close to the guys here all the audience is right here and yeah they're very good at using both sides so they're out here all the time in this area and uh, you can see we're very close to front of house here so uh, we have a thing going with uh, the pyro guys right now they're shooting streamers at us and at this point, uh, it's 3-3, three, three. so uh, they missed us three times and they got us three times. Behind the, the stage radio wall, we have all our techs up there, the guitar techs and the monitor guys. So let me take you up there. And they live in here. So you can see this is uh, Rob's side. So we got all the guitars, Rob's guitars. So um, you may be wondering how does, for example, the band give uh, cues for monitors and stuff like that. So we actually have a video feed for all the tech guys here. Uh, so they have a monitor so they can actually see what's going on on stage, even back here. Uh, so if Michael needs more in here in his in-ears or it needs to be louder or, uh, or the opposite, then he'll just go like this up and down. And Pat Rowe here, who's the monitor guy, he will take care of it. My name is Pat Rowe, I'm the monitor engineer for Volbeat, um, and here is my world back here. Uh, I'm upstage center with the rest of the backline camp. This is uh, my weapon of choice, Midas Pro X. Um, I'm using PSM 1000 uh, transmitters with P10R plus receivers, um, and uh, I also have a complement of MJF 210s. Um, on the lower grate for the band as well. So I'm mixing both in-ears and wedges for them, which uh, gets the best of both worlds. You can feel the physics of the sound uh, while also getting an accurate mix from the in-ears. The band is on, three of them are on JH. I've got Michael on Roxanne's, John and Casper are on JH 16's, and uh, Rob uses Westone uh, Pro X50's. My good friend Chris uh, developed this product called Mimi. Um, it's an adapter that uh, goes on a measurement microphone to measure uh, in-ears. So every day as part of my cleaning routine, I will measure the in-ears against uh, the factory trace that I took when we first um, got them back from the manufacturer after a repair or when I first got them. And uh, I can track the health, I guess, of the ear over time and make sure that, you know, I'm handing the artist a in-ear that is functioning correctly, you know, because there's nothing worse than trying to chase a problem that you can't hear, right? Um, and, uh, yeah, having that has, has saved me countless headaches, and it's, it's, uh, it's been a great product. So uh, besides the three trusses we have with the ultras in it, I also have five pods you see up there. 
uh, where they uh, it's five pods with nine mega points in and eight uh, auras in as well. So these are kind of my effect lights, um, and they're like uh, in a segment of nine and eight. So I use those a lot for uh, a lot of the effect and movement and stuff like that. And then in front of all the trusses, there's also video banners. Uh, so we conceal all the trusses basically with video um, to make it uh, like a more cohesive look between the stage, the mid and the trussing. Uh, I'm, I've always been uh, fascinated with the more theatrical side of things, you know, where you kind of blend things together. Uh, so that's why we, we kind of wanted the video on the trussing as well. My name is Jean-Luc Williams. Uh, I work as a video uh, operator, D3 operator. Um, I do programming as well for D3, which is a software and hardware company um, based out of UK. Uh, and I've been working now with Volbeat. This is my second tour with Volbeat. So Alex Spear has done most of the content for Volbeat and I've just operated and helped him set those, all those things up. And then uh, Shelby uh, Cued has also contributed to the content um, in works with a woman named Katya. Um, and so they've all kind of directed the content under the, the supervision of Niller to like bring this show to, uh, to reality. I suppose the challenges are the, the color tone and like the tones of light and how they are represented over the iMag uh, with the combination of, of, of video and the content that's going on there. Um, so within the software, there's a limited amount of coloring that can be done to the video files itself. So you can kind of change hue and saturation and so forth and, and, and adjust. But it's not as comprehensive as Bull Niller is capable of doing on the lighting side of that relationship. So I guess then it's making sure that the content lines up appropriately with the, with, with the video so that the tones of the band members are represented well and look good uh, to the audience and also for the records if those are being taken. So we're using two different types of uh, LED products. Uh, one is a vanish on the floor, that's the drum riser that were, excuse me, the drum V, drum riser. Uh, so we're using vanish uh, panels there and the idea was that you'd be able to see through uh, into the LED panels behind which are the floor cart uh, and those are CB8s and then there's the main LED wall and then there are three uh, banners which are flown um, and so we're using uh, Brompton Tesseras for the uh, LED processing for the banners, the main wall and then the floor cart. Uh, and then on the Vanish 8s, which is the drum riser, we're muxing a signal into a Image Pro because it only handles, the video processor only handles a 1080 signal, and so we had to take the 4K output and then bring that down, scale it, and then put it on in 1080, which was the only signal that these processors can take. My name's Denny Miller. I'm the front of house engineer for Volbeat, and this is the Servant of the Road World Tour. So Volbeat's really unique. Uh, for a very long time, and at least during my time here as the systems engineer years ago, uh, Volbeat was straightforward rock and roll, uh, metal. You know, you, you couldn't beat it. Bass, guitar, drums, send it. Uh, and that was great. Uh, further down the line came our new guitar player, Rob Caggiano, and he's really added his own uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Flavor to the Volbeat sound. Uh, and it's really unique and it's kind of steered that sound in a different direction. So I kind of think of it, at least from my mixing perspective, there's two kinds of songs in the Volbeat repertoire. There's the ones that are very straightforward and the ones that are a little more melodic, right? So it's a little less metal, a little more rock and roll, but it still has that Volbeat signature sound that you'll find in all the choruses. Uh, a lot of that comes from Michael's voice. It's very unique. Uh, so there's kind of two speeds, if you will. There's, there's heavy metal and then there's rock and roll. Uh, being able to balance those, it can be a unique task, definitely. Uh, there's a couple of songs where we feature a saxophone player and a pianist now. So, you know, trying to make that fit in on top of this already what is pretty hectic and 
if you think about it in the context of the mix, the guitars with all that overdrive and distortion, they take up a lot of space. So trying to find holes for this uh, can be a little bit challenging. We have to work through that as we uh, go through the snapshots in the show. Uh, if you think back to the last interview we did, you know, the snapshots at the time really only did delay times for the vocal effects, which there's a lot of. Michael's vocals, uh, it's really seven time-based effects all layered over each other to create that signature Volbeat sound. But now there's a lot more going on inside of the scene automation, inside of the console. Uh, there's just too many moves to make by hand in the uh, amount of time that you have to make them. So there's a bit more going on now. It's a bit more, uh, more complex show, uh, and it's been a lot of fun to create that with the band. And so there's several reasons that we switched to Panther. Uh, I think first and foremost are actually not the reasons that the sound guy would reach for, right? It's going to be the size of the box, how much truck space it takes up, what it weighs, how quickly you can deploy it. You know, all these things come in to be a massive consideration, definitely in today's economy, where it's all about, you know, how few people can you do this with, how few trucks can you do it with, and how can you effectively still cover the audience to the ninth degree. But from an acoustic perspective, Panther is a little step up, right? So it's, it's going to have a little more of that clean, focused sound sound that I love so much. There were actually some things about Leo, maybe some arguably distortion products that uh, I might have liked that I had to search for a little bit with Panther uh, because it is so clean and transparent in your face. They did a really wonderful job uh, with Panther. Uh, as far as the system design goes, not much has changed. Uh, as far as the physical configuration, there are a few less boxes by happenstance. Uh, there's some other tools that we're using, uh, our prediction software, Map3D. Uh, for a Meyer user, this is the first time ever we've really been able to look at venues in 3D uh, and especially you know across the industry with really good complex summation between elements in the system so we're even going into some rooms and going like wow we've been doing this wrong for a long time uh, and you know finding some new approaches to things so we are using lesser boxes we're doing instead of a delay approach it's more of a relay approach with the mains tilted down a little bit uh, and then we've got a really uh, it's not that unique but it's unique for Volbeat this thrust uh, is v-shaped on this tour and we're selling tickets to that pit it's called the parasite pit uh, inside there so there was a necessity to create wonderful coverage inside of there which is the center cluster you see uh, above that uh, thrust covers that in really nicely there's 900 LFC's single 18 inch subwoofers that sort of cover uh, the front of the stage and just that first kind of 10 or 12 meters you would say uh, and then the subwoofers in the air the 1100 LFC's uh, there's sufficient uh, array length there nine boxes per hang to steer that low end up a little bit and then you also see there's a stagger in those two subwoofers so that there's actually shifting that beam about three degrees upward still which doesn't sound like a lot but in the context of creating an equal experience for the most people in the audience it's huge it's the the number of people that are now getting the same experience greatly increased uh, just by that little stagger in the subwoofers uh, and making sure you have sufficient array length to not make them clash so much with the single 18s under the stage. So uh, let's walk over this way a little bit. Uh, on the sides and mains you're looking at 18 Panther each. The mains are entirely Panther L, uh, the long throw horn with the most narrow coverage and then on the sides they're mostly Panther L sans those top three boxes are actually Panther wide. Part of this is the uh, necessity of uh, availability, right? But uh, also putting those wide boxes on the top helps us complete the coverage with the delays just a little bit better. The delays are entirely Panther wide, uh, which again, in a room like this that's kind of teardrop shaped, you, you wouldn't think about that geometry being very difficult to cover uh, with a loudspeaker, but it's much more difficult than your typical oval shaped room. If you think about straight sides with the curve around the back, the arc seating, this kind of constant curve thing that's going on in here, this teardrop shape. Surprisingly challenging to make sure that you meet the coverage between the sides and the delays. We actually had to slide the delays a couple meters upstage, which is abnormal. And then behind the mains, again, two hangs of 1100 LFCs. Uh, there's no gradient up there. That is all in fire, just delaying the frontmost subs to the back and then the mains back to that. Uh, the nine per hang, uh, that gives us sufficient array length to keep all of the low frequencies off the floor, at least for the most part. Uh, makes the band have a much better time on stage. It looks a little uh, visually, maybe a little bit uh, misleading, uh, but if you take a look at the heat maps from a, a side view perspective, you can see what's going on there very clearly, how it's cleaning up the stage, how it's tilting that. If you look at the beam of the uh, coverage of the LF, it's tilting it up about three degrees. In some cases, you can make it a little more effective, but three is about all you're going to get before you really start to decouple from the amount of stagger you're putting on the loudspeakers. Uh, 
Uh, and this does a really wonderful job when paired with the 900 LFCs under the stage. There's 15 of them evenly spaced uh, just inside the thrust there, uh, which are truly trying to cover the people that are inside the pit, but they do reach out here just a little bit uh, and they make the, the coverage, the seam meet nicely just beyond the tip of the thrust here with the subwoofers. It's really great. And then uh, up there, right in the middle in the center, you'll see those are uh, six Panther wide that are covering the thrust down there. They're uh, up a little bit higher than normal, even though they're at the limits of what the chains uh, could get to here. Uh, we normally try to keep them about 12, 13 meters max. And I think today we got up to like 15 and a half. Doesn't sound like a lot, but that is a, uh, a big difference when you start thinking about the aspect ratio of how wide those loudspeakers are. And it really does cover from right at the front of the barrier to the edge of the pit. I think anyone that started as a systems engineer and moved into mixing has a little bit of a different understanding and a perspective on what's really going on in this room. Um, with that said, in regards to Volbeat and when you put it in context, I really think the thing that helped me the most here in this job was just hearing it for several years. You know, I heard it in every kind of room. We went outdoors, we went indoors, we went in clubs, we went in arenas, we went into few stadiums. Uh, and you gather a perspective on what the fans expect this show to sound like. Uh, and of course you have some ways, maybe you want to make it better and make it your own, and we certainly have. You know, we swapped consoles, uh, and I've gone in some different directions uh, with the sound a little bit. I think it's a little more hi-fi uh, and clean and defined. The vocal's a lot more powerful in my opinion, and you hear a lot less of the processing going on. Uh, but at the end of the day, the fans want this visceral, powerful, in-your-face guitar band. Uh, and you have to give it to them. I've got my uh, trusty Meyer Sound Ami Studio monitors. Once upon a time, it would have been uh, HD ones, but now we're to the Amis. These things are wonderful. Uh, they are truly transparent, and what goes in really does come out unadulterated. Uh, you'll find yourself, you know, hearing things in these and fixing problems that a lot of PAs won't really let you hear. Uh, up to and including Leo and Lion. That was one of the things of switching to Panthers. Like, wow, there's this extra level of clarity that wasn't there before, and you know, you have to go in and get a little more surgical to clean up little problems in your mix. Actually, all this started where I had a conversation with Michael about the stage and how he feels up there. And basically, we've done a lot of risers. You know, we were a metal band, you know, a rock band. We want risers. We want, you know, they can go up on platforms and, you know, all that stuff. And it worked for us for a long time. You know, we had places to put fire and all that. But he, um, he got a little bit uh, annoyed with that. Uh, because he kind of felt that they were moving back on stage and he wanted to move forward. So him and his band members want to go forward. So that's why the stage is basically empty and the rest of it is them moving forward towards the audience. He wants to interact more with them. So those designs I did in the beginning basically just chucked away because that was like risers and left levels and video fascias everywhere. And uh, we kind of just said, well, let's keep it simple. Let's, let's keep it about the band and the audience. They want to move into the audience. We have the Parasite Pit. It, it, was, it was the best option uh, for them so they can kind of move into the crowd from both sides without having go, going out the same route, everybody in the middle, which everybody does. And um, so this was, they can kind of work all audience on the both sides and then they congregate on the middle and kind of do their thing out there and it looks great when they're all in the middle. And the lights and the stage pressions up there is more for the audience and uh, also for me, <laughs> you know, I love that. But for them, it's, it's uh, all about the audience and going out there and, you know, being in the middle of the crowd with, the, with their fans and, you know, giving back and taking and, you know, like that whole energy back and forth. Uh, that's the feeling I get from them and they seem to be very, very happy with, with the, the layout we have and the way it worked out. So the way I run the show with Volbeat is basically I have cue lists, everything's queued. Uh, I do a lot of macros uh, and then I have a punt page on uh, my execute buttons where I put strobes and all those extra effects on top of it. I like that hands-on still feeling because it gives, it, it, it gives, gives me a feeling of control and it gives me a feeling of being a part of it. So yeah, and also the band is not very uh, much, the records are not time coded, so it's kind of also necessary to, you know, that I have to move that route. But it, I think it works well, and even the lights are busy and stuff like that, I, I still have time to, to go through the cue lists and, uh, you know, make it, make it nice and easy transitions, not just like that. It's smooth and nice and color changes and, you know, fade times and stuff. 
uh, which is difficult on a punt, punt page. You know, it's more aggressive. This is aggressive, but with a touch of, uh, I don't know, grace, if you can call it that.